starting, we're in the Old Testament. We're going to just do one verse in Exodus, Exodus 19, I believe it is. And uh, let me get my glasses on. I want that age in my life. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Verse 12. And then we're going to go over to Leviticus 19. Verses 1 through 3. Starting on Exodus 20. Verse 12. Very simple. One of the Ten Commandments, of course. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives to you. Which the Lord gives to you. What does he give to you? Days in the land. He's talking about length of life. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be prolonged in the land. And I want to bring your attention to the word honor. God says honor, so it's honor. Part of the Ten Commandments, but notice he's mentioning your father and your mother along with honor. Now, we are taught to honor leadership in this country. The president, the governors, the senators, everybody's taught to give honor. The Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. And we do that. But we don't justify sin and we don't let corruption go along. We don't. We don't honor sin. Come on, I want you to understand that. We're here because the Word of God has told us to gather ourselves together and not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. That's why we're here. Sunday is the Lord's day. All right? It's God's day. That's why we gather together. That's why we assemble. But we do honor our leadership. I have never seen a time in our period, though, in our history, in our, a period in our history, where we have so much dishonor for leadership. I mean, I'm going to stay away from why, but I'm just going to say, uh, God's not happy with it, and I have to be careful with it, because they are so far off, it's incredible. They have left truth a long time ago. They left that a long time ago. But we're still commanded to honor Give honor where honor is due. So that's the tension that we live under all the time. We live under this tension. Now getting back to your parents, you honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long. Honor is a foundational truth that has to be taught on a regular basis. It has to be taught. You know why? Because you're not going to get it anywhere else. We have to talk about it here in church. Honor for leadership. Honor for each other. The Bible says preferring each other above ourselves. That really is honor. That's what it is. So, God is a God of honor. And in honor, there is structure. What do I mean by structure? I mean, there is accountability. There's accountability. There is... Uh, a hierarchy in God is a hierarchy in the spirit world. There's angels and there's things called archangels. There's a, there's a structure in the world, in the, in, the, in the outer limits here, all around us. There are creatures that God has created. All creatures God created, everything, nothing happened. Now they are playing around, uh, science is playing around, doing different things, but it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Cloning. How many of you heard of cloning? Okay. But God used man and man cloned animals. Now there is a possibility of cloning people. Really? There is. But I'm not going to get off on that. I'm just going to say God has to use us knowledge and we use it. If we use it wrong, we're in trouble. God is looking for us to honor the ones that he has given to us in our lives. He's given us parents. He's given us uncles, aunts, grandparents, a 
whole structure. I said there's a, a hierarchy. There's a whole structure in God. And that's true in the spiritual realm too. We have people that we look to and revere. We revere them. Uh, as our spiritual authority and parents. And the older they get, the better they get. Say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Years ago in Pentecost, we used to have certain women that we called mother. How many of you remember that? Mother. That term mother. In Pentecostal churches. Mother so-and-so. Mother this one. Mother that one. I remember. Sitting right here in Zion 50 years ago, right in the, in the center row here, was uh, Sister Ma of Session. How many of you remember? Sister Ma of Session, one hand, Brother Dan, and one second hand over there. All right. Sister Ma of Session. And she wore the old, I use the word old, Pentecostal uniform of the women. She had a, in the summertime, she had a white dress on, and she had a blue cape, and that's exactly what Sister Gibson wore. That's what they all wore. They wore white. When they came to church, and it gave uh, the world thought we were all crazy. Because the women were all dressed in white. No, white is the bride of Christ. And they did it because they were doing it to God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. But we honored these people. We honored them. And so honor is a part of what we live with. The world has taught us to dishonor, unfortunately. And so they don't want they don't want you to honor anybody. Only the ones they want to honor. They want to take their own heroes and make their own heroes. Okay. But God has told us to honor our father and our mother, that our days may be long. Look at that promise. That our days may be long. How many of you want long days? Well, the first order of business is honoring your parents. That's the first honor. First order of business. You want to live a long life? You've got to honor your parents. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, I've grown up with this in my family. I've seen my father honor his mother and grandma and uh, take care of her and his aunt and take care of her too, take care of everybody. And I've seen it. I've seen it. It's been demonstrated in front of me. Most families years ago, they never thought about putting their their elders into an old people's home. That's why we call it old people's home. Uh, a nursing home. They never thought about that. That never entered anybody's mind. They lived with the family. And somehow the family took care of everybody. And it all worked. And guess what? They received a blessing by doing that. Hallelujah. So a lot of times you had families with three generations. You had children. You had the adults, the parents, and then you had the grandparents. And you know what it did? It gave stability to the family. The family was stable. And children learned that they had to honor everybody. You know, if my grandmother yelled at me, I got in trouble. If grandma yelled at you, you're in trouble. Really in trouble. So don't make sure grandma doesn't yell at you. <laughs> so, if you learned that respect just wasn't due to your parents, but it was to other people too. Respect, honor. And through that, love came. Love came into the family. Because you learned that not only did your parents love you, hopefully, but other people in the family loved you too. Amen. Hallie, God is so great. And he structured this whole thing. He created this whole thing. And so, today we're just talking a little bit about honor. Honoring our parents. But we're noticing that. What? You have to honor your parents, your fathers and your mothers. We have to. If we don't, we can't receive it. Everything in life is sowing and reaping. Everything has been sowing and reaping. I watched it in different people that I know. They didn't sow and they don't reap. And they get mad at God. Ooh, they get mad at God. Hey, treat me like it. Hey, you didn't sow. You didn't sow. You're not going to reap. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. These are all spiritual principles that we live by, that we're blessed by. So I just want to have on that point home. Honor 
Uh, you can't get away with not honoring your parents. You can't do it. God won't let you do it. You know why? Your father and your mother represent God. Literally, God uses them to bring you into the world physically. But they represent God. So when you are upset with your parents and you don't honor them, you're not honoring God. You're not honoring God. Oh, I honor God. I'm in church and I give. And I... If you don't honor your parents, you're not honoring God. They represent God in your life. This is why it's so important for fathers to be good fathers and to be non-alcoholics and drug addicts and everything else. Why? Because your children are receiving their idea about who God is through you. You find out who God is through the parents that you have. This is important. Now this means you can change. Say how a little bit. Maybe things don't work out too good, too good in your family. But things can change. When you get into God, they can be a miracle. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So honor is an essential part of serving God. Serving God. I learned that, I learned that early on coming to Zion as a teenager. Not everybody's perfect. Not every person is perfect. And there are people in the kingdom who are not perfect, but we still have to honor them. Amen. You have to. There's a line in The Godfather in the third movie where he says to his sister, I'm the boss. Am I the boss? Am I the boss? And she says, yes, you're the boss. Meaning, I'm the boss. And that's what God is saying. Am I the boss? Yes, you are. Thank you, Jesus. You're the boss. Hallelujah. And the boss has given us a book called the Bible. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, honor is essential. Honor holds things together. Now, I'm getting very nervous in this country because there's a lot of dishonor. And a lot of people brought dishonor on themselves. But we still have to honor them anyway because of their position. In the service, they're taught to salute. You salute. And a lot of times, it's very hard for guys to salute other guys they don't like. Ooh, is it hard? They don't like them. They don't like them. They were bad, bad officers, they made bad decisions. But they have to salute the rank. They have to salute the rank, not the man, the rank. Hallelujah. I really, I really am ashamed of this country sometimes because this generation has not gone through teachings on honor and authority. And most of the time, years ago, two generations ago, he came through going into the service. When the guys off the street went to the service, they learned how to salute. Yes, sir. No, sir. Believe me, that's healthy. Because you have to recognize authority. Yes. You have to recognize authority. Say hallelujah. Yes, sir. We recognize God's authority. Amen. We recognize his authority in the church. We recognize his authority in the family. There's authority in the family. God created it. There's a chain of command. Hallelujah. They want something like this. You wait till your father gets home. Something like that. I knew I was in trouble. You wait till your father gets home. And then if I was really in trouble, I got smacked by her, and then I got another smack when he got home. Yeah? Wait till your father gets home. <laughs> I want to tell them how bad you've been. Thank God for correction. Yes. Say hallelujah. Yes. Give the Lord a hand. Thank God for correction. Hallelujah. Correction is not rejection. The world wants to 
interpret correction as being rejection. It's not. Correction will set you on the correct, right path. It will set you straight. If you don't get corrected, you're going to be a disaster. You're going to have an accident. You're going to crash and burn. Years ago, my father would we'd be driving when I was younger, and he'd say to me, somebody would pass us fast and going 100 miles an hour, and they, they, they're trying to get ahead of everybody, and he'd say, there goes an accident just waiting for a place to happen. That's right. That's true. And so Satan knows that. So honor is a part of all of our lives. All of our lives. Honor. And as we learn to do it, as we enjoy doing it, God blesses us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry who is over you or who your boss is, even if he mistreats you. All you have to worry about is your relationship with God. You have to honor him. And that's it. The rest is God will handle. Say hallelujah. God will take care of you. Hallelujah. Turn with me quickly to Leviticus. Leviticus, there's two, three verses here we want to look at. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Leviticus 19, verses 1 through 3. This is concerning, these are some words that God spoke to Moses about daily life. What is daily life? You get up in the morning, you get dressed, you get washed. Well, most of the time, some people get right into devotions. They have a daily routine. They eat, have a breakfast. So God was, God is very interested in your life and what you do on a daily basis. This has to do with daily life. Beginning on verse 1, chapter 19, Leviticus. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy... For I, the Lord your God, am holy. And this is something we haven't preached on for years that people don't talk about, even in our circles. Holy. Don't talk about holiness anymore, being holy. God said, I'm holy. You're going to be holy. Because you're my children, you'll be holy. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You're going to live according to the word of God. You're going to be holy. Okay. Now watch what he says here. Uh -huh. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Three, every one of you shall reverence his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I, the Lord your God, I am the Lord your God. He didn't say on Father's Day, he said every day. <laughs> He didn't just say, we give him a card on Father's Day and that's it, we, we honor him. No, he said every day. Every day you want to reverence your father and your mother. Why? Because when people reverence their parents, they're reverencing me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Part of my instruction for today is this. Don't worry that your children won't love you. Sometimes you have to demand respect. He won't love me. They won't love me. Who cares? They will eventually. They will. You have to demand respect. I learned that also uh, going to a New York City public high school, which was incidentally a very good school. It's called. Uh, it was in Bay Ridge, Fort Hamilton High School, that's what it was called. He graduated from there a long time ago, 1968. But we had a group of uh, gym teachers that were rough and ready. They, they took care of the kids in the street. In those days, if you got out of line, you got smacked. And nobody called an attorney, nobody called the cops, nobody called anybody. If you talk back, pow! In gym class, I'm talking. In gym class, you got smacked. And uh, the teacher used to stand up on a, an elevated platform like this, just about this high, 
and there was a, every class had about 150 boys in there. And we had our gym shorts on and our t-shirts, we were getting ready to run along and do some exercises. And they would give us some instructions. And this, one time this young man was sitting right down in front of him, and uh, Mr. Kern, he was the boss there, Mr. Kern. And he could pump the basketball, just, he could, you know, whip it around like anything. And this kid was talking bad, using bad language, and he, he threw the basketball right on his chest and knocked him over backwards. Pow! Well, believe me, everybody got quiet in there, you know. And then he said to him, and don't you bring all that stuff that you get in the street, don't you bring it in here. <laughs> No, he said a word. Believe me, he didn't do that again either. It was respect. Yes. It was respect. Yes, fear went along with it. They had to use fear to get our attention. They did. And they did. And God uses fear to get your attention. So I want to tell you something about that. A lot of people don't listen to God, don't pay any attention to God until they get frightened. Then they go to God. That's right. They live in this constant cycle of up and down and up and down. And after a while, God gets tired of that. So, reverence is a part of our lifestyle. This is what he's saying here. Teach the people to reverence their family. If they reverence their family, they'll reverence leadership. Other leadership, they will. They'll reverence other leadership. Thank you, Jesus. On a daily basis, don't just talk about it one or two times. Every day, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know how and where that comes? Daily devotions with your family. When you have devotions. I'm too busy, I can't read the Bible prayer. If you're too busy to do that, you're too busy. You're way too busy. So you can teach respect and honor to your family on a daily basis. Amen. Does it work? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants you to have peace. He wants you to have respect in your homes. Hallelujah. That's what he wants you to have. Now, you may have to shut off the radio, the TV, uh, turn the computer off, turn all of those things off in order to get quiet time in your home. And you have to have quiet time. How do you know that? You gotta be quiet. When you get in the presence of the Lord, the Lord, you have to be quiet. And respect is taught and listened to and you hear you hear it when you get alone with God. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.